Some of my thoughts on the Chinese three treasures, Jing, Qi, and Shen. I'm going to talk about two of the three treasures, uh, Jing and Qi, more than Shen, but just to, to mention it, Shen is basically the mind heart. It's a word that comprises, sometimes translated as spirit. But anyways, that's a whole other thing. Not ready to talk about that. What I want to talk about with Qi and Jing. So Jing is, they're both energy, basically. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Qi first. That's the one most people have heard of. Qi, the symbol for Qi um, has uh, the symbol for rice, basically, the slightly modified version, inside of it. And it also, the word Qi means breath in Chinese. So rice and breath, it's interesting that those two are encompassed in this word qi because those are basically the two uh, places that we derive energy. We get energy from food and we get energy from uh, the air. Those are both uh, essential in order to, um, you know, to fuel our bodies and our lives. So, um, so qi is basically the non-physical representation or manifestation of energy so when you eat food it goes through a chemical process and then you could look at your that chemical and say okay this atp or whatever is energy but like you don't care about atps you care about energy on a practical level in your day-to-day -day life like you wonder like okay do i have good energy or bad energy if you had energy but no atps you know like who cares okay so i'm moving around i'm doing everything i'm living my life so it's like energy, I feel like it's almost the, the more real thing. Though a lot of people, materialist thinkers, would say like, no, it's the, the chemical compound, which is the real thing. But anyways, I thought that was an interesting idea. Um, so qi is this uh, non-physical, metaphysical manifestation of energy. And let me just make sure this is recording. Yeah, it's recording. <laughs> All right. So it's a non-physical manifestation of energy. And... Um, in the Chinese tradition, you can get it in more ways, like, so breath, breathing, and it also, like, exists everywhere in all things. It's, like, it's energy itself, and matter is energy. So qi is, like, is basically, like, the Western conception of energy, and then you take it into matter, and you're, like, okay, there's energy everywhere. And there's a metaphysical belief that you can use, like, qigong and stuff like that to kind of absorb some of this energy from the universe into yourself and store it. Now, this is when we're going to get into Jing. So, Qi is like the day-to-day -day energy. It goes in and out. It's non-personal. So, there's Qi in everything. And your Qi is not necessarily different than someone else's Qi. It's like um, Qi is impersonal. Okay? Um, Shen and Jing, I think, are a little more personal. Jing, I don't know if it's personal, actually. Uh, I'll have to think about that. That's interesting. So, Jing is like the primordial Qi. The energy that you're born with. And it is like a lot, it's like denser and more, uh, it's more, it's more energetic, it's more powerful and more profound, I think is a good word, than the, than the chi day to day, day to day, the normal chi that, that we were just talking about. So the jing is like your reserve energy and you shouldn't be drawing on your jing energy. You won't draw on your jing energy unless you deplete your chi energy, basically. So if you're not eating well and you're expending a lot of energy, or you're stressing about something like mental, the mind, it consumes a lot of energy too. If you're putting out more energy than you're taking in, eventually you're going to start drawing on your jing reserves. And if you do that, that's when your health will start to deteriorate. That's when you'll start to see, you'll notice your immune system and other things will start to flare up. Um, so you don't want to deplete your jing. You don't even want to touch your jing. In fact, what you want to do, you do want to touch your jing, but you want to put energy into your jing. And that's when you cultivate enough chi, more chi than you need, using, you know, by good healthy life, diet, uh, practices like qigong and martial arts and stuff like that that are designed to cultivate this chi and tai chi and stuff like that. Then you store it in your, I think the jing is usually stored mostly in the lower dantian, which is like this area. <laughs> and um not the crotch area but like above like basically like two inches below the navel and like in the center cross section of your body is where they say like the center of the dantian is and so you store your energy there and if you keep accumulating it that's when you start to get into these things where in like martial legends or whatever like these great masters can do things like when they hit you and then you're like 
whoa, that didn't feel like a normal hit, you know what I'm saying? Or it, like, disturbs your inner energy and you're, like, somehow shaken. You know, it has, like, different effects because they can manipulate this energy because they have more and they know how to manipulate it through hands or through whatever. Anyways, I don't know too much about that. I'm still in the exploratory stages, so I won't get in-depth. But just to recap, I've talked about Shen a little bit. It's the mind-heart connection, but we'll get into that in another thing. I'm not sure how this mixes into the system. But the system I talked about most was the Jing and the Qi system. And the Jing is the primordial Qi. The primordial, both are energy, basically. And the Jing is the primordial energy, the energy you're born with. It's dense, it's powerful. It will be uh, called upon when you deplete your chi so let's say have you ever had like a second wind where you're like totally exhausted and then all of a sudden you have a lot of energy and you even like get home after that long day of work and you're still energized and you're like where did this energy come from i didn't eat anything like that's like drawing on your jing but then the next day you might like sleep for a long long time or be like super hungry or something like that because your body's going to try to if you have a connection with your body then it's going to try to you know redo it and you don't abuse it and keep drawing out more on your jing and stuff jing um, so Jing is that energy and then Qi is the um, Qi is the non-personal Energy that exists in everything and basically like the E equals MC squared matter is energy It's the energy that's in all matter and it's uh, it moves and stuff and basically what energy is I think well This is how I think of it in in a more like simple sense. It's the ability to create change or it's the fundamental like unit of change if there was no energy, everything would stay exactly the same. So, but like, then there would be nothing because change is happening in, on the molecular level with electrons moving around. So, so it's that, it's what allows change to happen. The more energy you have, the more changes you can in, in affect, you can create changes, you can control your body, you can move, you can affect the world, whatever. Anyway, so it's energy. Qi is the impersonal energy. Jing is the primordial energy. Qi comes from breath, breathing, and food, consuming, you know, uh, consuming food. And then it's transformed into the non-physical version, which is the Qi. And yeah, you can also absorb Qi from the atmosphere and stuff. I don't know. I think that's a decent summary. So, well, uh, that's it. Still got to work on that sign off.